So what's up, y'all? Yeah. I am Gabe Morales. That's G-A-B-E, not G-A-Y-B. <laughs> <laughs> like some people seem to think. I'll get to that in a little bit, because I know what you guys are thinking. <laughs> I look like Gonzo, right? <laughs> you remember Gonzo, right? <laughs> Someone told me at a show one time that I looked like Gonzo, so I was like, okay, I gotta write this into one of my jokes. And when he said this to me, I was like, you think that's a diss, but Gonzo was my favorite Muppet. <laughs> So, like, and then I had forgotten what Gonzo looked like. So I got home and I like Googled it like mad quick because I had to figure out what Gonzo looked like. And you remember, Gonzo has like those big old eyes and that long, thick, veiny nose that look like a big dick and balls. <laughs> and that's when I realized that's why Gonzo was my favorite monster. <laughs> And as kids, we were always afraid that the gays were going to get us. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you think they got me. <laughs> they did. <laughs> I just had to wait to be grown up. They didn't really want to mess with a little fat kid that looked like Gonzo. So when we were kids, we had this little running joke that we would play. So if we ever dropped our keys, we would say, kick them to the next block. If we ever had a tire of shoes, wait till you get home. Because the gays are going to get you. <laughs> so I used to drop my keys. <laughs> my wallet, <laughs> I would leave my shoes untied, and I waited, and waited, and apparently I am still waiting, because I can't find nobody to fucking date me, and I don't know what it is, I don't know what it is, I've been like, and it's getting serious now, because, like, it's not that I'm tired of being single, I love being single, I really do, it's just, now I have a right to get married, and so I feel like I have to use this right. Because <laughs> it's like going to be useless if I don't get married. So I'm like, fuck, so I'm trying to date. I'm like serious about dating. I'm like, anybody that looks at me, I'm like, oh, maybe he's the one. <laughs> I live in Harlem and I was walking around Harlem the other night and this fine six foot two thug stops me. <laughs> He's like, yo, what's up, man? You know what a bisexual spot is around here? And I was like, is this a trick question? <laughs> and he was like, you want some of this? You want some of this? You want some of this? And I was like, what kind of gay bashing set up is that? <laughs> He was like, no, I'm kind of fond of you. <laughs> I want to get with you. And I was like, oh. I had to go like to a comedy show or something like an audition, something like serious. Like, so I couldn't like go with him, right? Like, <laughs> it always happens like this. Like someone talks to you, like, you know, I'm desperate now. I'm tired of being alone. So like, I'm like, why have I got this audition and all that sort of stuff? So we get back to his place. <laughs> <laughs> and the thug turned into little 
little Richard on me quicker than I could say a walk wobble the walk walk. And I hate when this happens. Because it messes with my head. Like both of them. And at that moment I was like, this is why you're single, you're homophobic. It's not just you guys, it's me too. So I gotta work on that. But like, I guess I gotta work on that. I got hit on the other, so I'm getting hit on like frequently like now, because I guess I'm putting it out there that I like, I'm tired of being single. So I was on the subway the other, on the subway platform the other day, and the train rolled in, and this dude started like turning around, and I was like, oh my god, that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get on this train. <laughs> so I like get on the train, and he's like breaking his neck to like look for me. And then I finally, the train was packed, so I finally swam like a little fish over there. <laughs> and I'm like standing right by, and we say hello, we start talking, da 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 da, asking me if I have a boyfriend. Yes. And I'm like, kind of, sort of, because you know, you gotta play hard to get. <laughs> and um, he gives me his number, and he wants me like to come over to his house after, because I was heading to a show. And so he's like, come over like, and hang out. And I'm like, oh, I don't know, I'm gonna be getting out of this show kind of late. I don't really think I wanna come and hang out but I'll take your number. So I get to the show and I'm like, oh man, he gave me his number on a post-it that has like a website for a job like, that he might need. So we're together now. <laughs> <laughs> Let me text you and tell you that you like left this, look, this note on a post-it. An hour later, he sends me a text message back saying, I gotta tell you the truth. I have a man in my life and his name is Jesus Christ. <laughs> and then he goes on to say all this wonderful stuff about Jesus Christ that I can't compete with. <laughs> and like at the end of the text of this three lo this three page long text, he tells me about how like he's no longer in the life, meaning that he's no longer gay anymore. And I'm like, well, why'd you pick the gayest way to tell me you weren't gay? <laughs> You're in a relationship with Jesus Christ, but you can't be one more with me. And I was like, whatever. So yesterday was Father's Day, and this was like the first year that I like don't have a father. Like uh, my dad passed away like in December. I, I think. Yeah, 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 it's December. Um, it's okay, you guys. You didn't have anything to do with his death, but if you did, you don't have to apologize. Um, um, so, like, my, when I told my dad that I was going to become a stand-up comic, he was like, you can't ever talk about me. My dad was like, really, really, like, had a lot of issues, I guess. So he was like, you can never talk about me, you can never talk about me. So on one hand, I was like, oh, man, I was really, really sad with that. But I was like, finally, oh, I've been waiting to talk for years about you, so now I can do it. Because what is he going to do? So... So I'm first generation American, my dad is from Guatemala, and my dad never wanted to become a citizen of the United States because he was so proud of being from another country. And um, so he never really knew much about American history, really. Like, um, I could never really talk to him about anything. He used to think that the 4th of July was the day that they had freed slaves. <laughs> <laughs> So every 4th of July, my dad would walk up to black folks and be like, Congratulations! You're free! Thank you guys very much. Have a good night. Have a good night.